Hi, it's Sandra here. Um, I decided to do a follow-up on my videos of polymer stamp making. Okay, um, for those who haven't seen any previous videos that I've done on this or read any information that I've done on this, this is really an update as to the method that I now use, the equipment that I now use, and the results that I'm now able to get. Now, let me preface this by saying this is for amateur purposes only. It is not something with my setup that you are going to make money at. Not in a month of Sundays will you be doing that. It's for those people like myself who are ardent crafters, who like a challenge, who want to make their own custom stamps, uh, maybe for a specific purpose, such as a wedding or a birthday or whatever. But those who have a genuine interest in designing their own stamp items, um, I said not for sale because to be honest, there is too much trial and error in this, too much time involved. And with the setup that I'm using, it's too labor intensive to be profitable in any shape or form. So this is just a case of if you're interested in the process this is how it's done and this is how i do it now for the purposes of polymer stamp making you need a photopolymer resin now the one that i am now using because it's one that i can get hold of in spain but it actually comes from the uk is called i55 hv clear and it's produced by Photocentric UK, which is a company in Peterborough. And there is the telephone number, should you wish to ring them up and inquire about it. It is a completely clear, transparent, colourless photopolymer. And it makes the kind of stamps that normally are pretty expensive to buy because genuine photopolymer, high quality photopolymer stamps are expensive. And the reason is probably the fact that it is relatively labor intensive. Um, but anyway, it can be done at home and it's good fun if you feel so inclined. Now, this machine here that you can see, I bought purposely for it. And it's one of these UV nail lamps. Um, it's not branded, but it has a timer on it that goes from 90 seconds, 120 seconds and as it happens, 180 seconds. And then it has four bulbs inside and it's pretty standard. There are lots of these around and they're very cheap to buy. Okay, I think this one costs something like 12 quid. Um, so that's the main piece of equipment that you need. The next thing you would need to do things the way I do it is a couple of pieces of glass. I forget what the measurement is, it's probably somewhere in the region of about 15 centimeters um, da, 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 da. and I had it cut specifically to size so that um, it would fit my machine it's about 13 and a half centimeter square and it is half a centimeter thick okay that bit may be important I mean this was just cut by a local glass um, window manufacturer and he was very kind he cut it to size for me out of some scraps he had and he beveled the edges so they're not sharp you need two of those you need some craft foam and you need double-sided tape and this is to make the dam to hold the liquid basically so this was just a large sheet of craft foam it's just the standard stuff that I find over here and let me see how thick is this just going to take my glasses off so I can read what I'm looking at. And it's about 1.5 mil thick. So you need that and tape to put on the back. Now what I do is I have a big sheet of it. I've got a wide tape, double sided tape reel. I put a wide piece across and then I just cut it with scissors into lengths. And that is a nice easy way of getting my dam. You will need for the way that I do it a high quality black vinyl this stuff isn't stuff which is generally used for art applications as such this is wall vinyl the sort used to put patterns on walls in houses and it is pretty black it's also a very high quality vinyl in that it cuts beautifully 
on my silver bullet. It's very strong and it doesn't stretch in the way that some of the cheaper ones. I mean, if I pull that, I mean, there's no give in it. A lot of the cheap vinyl that you buy actually stretches if you pull it in this is pretty strong stuff. It's also got a very good adhesive on the back. Um, I can actually make my um, blanks out of this. I can wash them in hot water and it still stays on the backing that I put it on. Okay, the other thing that you will need are some pieces of clear plastic. Now I use this one's already been cut, but as you can see, it's like a document folder with just one of these little um, thumb tabs in it. A4 size, and I cut them up and I use them um, as necessary. So you need those. Now what do I do to make my blanks? Well, I've got one here, and this is one that I've cut a while ago and I cut this on my silver bullet and the way I do it is I apply my vinyl I take the paper backing off my vinyl and I apply it directly to a sheet of the acetate okay and then I cut it by putting it on my mat and I cut it with the acetate on the back the vinyl on the front I cut it so that I kiss cut the vinyl away. It does it very, very easily. So then all I do is take it from the machine and then I weed out the bits that I don't want. I'm not going into how to design the actual lines that you want, but obviously you're working in reverse. The bits that will create your stamp are the bits that don't have the vinyl covering. Okay. Now a word about this vinyl. It is not probably completely UV resistant. So this does affect the timings that the gel needs to be set for, okay? Now, I'm doing it this way for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I don't want to have to be stuck trying to source and purchase special uh, papers to go through my printer. Secondly, I don't want to be spending a fortune on printer ink, which if you're printing out jet black sheets you're going to be doing. And thirdly, because the stuff which is used is largely geared towards overhead printers, this stuff is not that easy to get any longer. Um, and my particular printer won't print on it regardless. So <laughs> I rang them up. I've got a relatively new printer and I rang up the manufacturers and said, what's the setting for this? And they said, it's not recommended for that. We don't, and I think, great, wonderful. So that is why I am using a vinyl and it will produce the results, but you need to be particularly careful in your timing. Now, one of these uh, stamps here, for example, is the cake um, that's on there. And I store mine in little CD envelopes. because I find that's relatively convenient, it keeps them clean. And if I take this one out here, you can see that it is very similar to the sort of thing that you would purchase in a shop. Um, this is one I made with the old stuff that I had, in fact, and isn't the probably the best example um, that I've got. However, what you need to do is basically you need to put your design... So you would have a piece of glass. Now I've put spacers on the outside because it helps, okay. You have your design in the center and you tape it down. Now if you're sensible, you'll do things in reverse and then you can put your gel on the vinyl, sorry, not on the vinyl, but on the acetate because it makes it easier to clean if you want to reuse your, um, your template. So you stick it down and you make sure it is nice and flat. On your design, you want a good amount of black around the areas that you're going to be making your stamp from. And then you take your dam and you put it around your design. You want to make sure that this dam 
is on where it's black. You don't want to put it, say, there. You want to make sure it's on the black because you want to stop any extra light coming through and ruining your design. Okay. So you do that and then you take your gel and you fill your dam. And you fill it so that it's not quite full, but almost. Because it's very, very thick, viscous liquid, and it's very sticky. And uh, basically, it will level out to one level if you don't put too much in. So you then got your dam in and everything else, and you put the other piece of glass on the top and just press down lightly in the centre and check that your liquid has covered all your design. You'll get to know, if you do very small stance first, you'll get to know how much it will spread. But basically, you want that to be completely level. You don't want too much of it in there because it'll be yeah, just oozing out the sides. And you don't want too little in it because if you do that, you'll have a dip in your stamp. So you do need it to be level. So once you've got that done, you then take it and you put it in your machine with the design on the bottom, your dam and your piece of glass on the top. You put it in that way up inside your machine for a set period of time. When that time is up, you turn it over, you put it back in the machine for another period of time. Then when that's done, you take it apart, you take it off, you peel away. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> when you have got your dam in and your liquid on, you put another piece of the acetate on the top. Okay, I forgot that step, sorry. So you then peel it apart and you should then be able to see traces of the design that you've done. You want to put washing up liquid on it and take a soft brush and you wash it out under warm running water or at least warm water, even if it's not running water, until you've got all the gummy residue off. If you've got the timings correct, you'll end up with a good stamp. If you haven't got the timings correct, you could end up with no image at all. You could end up with letters that are floating or you might end up with absolutely nothing, depending on how wrong your timing has gone. Now, what are the important things about timing? OK, the most important thing about timing is getting your base right. This design, as you can see, has got different elements on it, but none of those are going to be of any use if they're free floating and not attached to anything. So you want to make the back of the design, which is known as the floor. And that is the bit that you are doing when you are first putting your design into the lamp. That's the first exposure. Now, with the setup that I have and with that particular liquid that I have, what I do is I pre-warm my lamp for 180 seconds because I've got a button there that says 180. That's three minutes and that's warm enough to warm the lamps up so they're not really cold on startup. So I do that before I get my polymer liquid out, okay? This liquid can set in strong daylight, so you want to keep the liquid dark. Uh, I keep it, it's in a black bottle anyway, and I keep it under my desk and that's fine because there's no direct light going under there whatsoever. Um, keep it in its box or whatever, but it needs to be kept dark. So you get it out only as and when necessary. Now for fine lines and fine text, my first cure is 27 seconds. Okay, now that may seem quite a long time. If you compare it to something like the Teresa Collins stamp maker instructions and things, they are completely different timings, but they are using different things to do it. It's probably a different resin although it may be made by the same company, possibly a different resin, and different resins have different times. They are using complete black negatives, which again, as I've said, mine may not actually be complete black. And they may be using thicker, thinner glass, I don't know. So 
I can only give you the times for what I'm doing. And the second developing time for me is two minutes and 10 seconds. Now, these times are crucial. You don't want to count it in your head. You want to make sure you have a timer. I've got an iPhone and I have a timer on there and I've got two timers and one is for 27 seconds and the other is for two minutes, 10. And I use it and I make sure I switch the machine off exactly when that timer goes off. Not two seconds later, not three seconds later, but exactly when it goes off. The difference between getting it right and getting it wrong is a few seconds. Okay. So the first one does the floor and the second bit does your design on the front. If you do develop it for too long on the back, you will find that your floor is too deep and you've got no gel left basically to develop the front. If you don't do it for long enough, you'll find all your little details are floating around and unattached, which is pretty useless. So you need to get that floor correct. What I suggest you do if you're trying this out for the first time is do something just with a very small design. And to start off with, don't put it in for the second develop. See how far your floor has developed first. Just do it on the one side. Just do the back first and see what happens. Um, now, the second developing time, what you're aiming for when you peel away the two layers is to be able to see some gel which is still wet while seeing your design in the other side. If there's no wet gel in there, then you've developed the top for a bit too long. Um, and it is trial and error. I mean, I got some of this new gel for Christmas and it is a different brand to what I was previously using and the times are completely different. So you can't um, just say, well, it's going to be this time and that's that. I can tell you what I do for my setup and it may be that it works perfectly for you and it may be that it doesn't. If you use a different gel, ignore these timings because it's not going to be the same. Okay. Um, but if you've got a very similar setup or you set up pretty much the same, then hopefully it'll give you a pretty good guideline to go by. Um, for example, the gel that I use, there are no, no guidelines for the timing of it <laughs> that I could find at all. <laughs> None. So I think they're a bit wary because there are so many variables and that's why. So anyway, once you have taken it out and you've washed it out, you then put it in another plastic or you put it into a plastic tray with just a tiny amount of water in it to cover the stamp. And then you cure it again for about six minutes. And then you allow it to dry and you end up with a stamp. And hopefully... That will be that. But I said, yeah, things can go well and they can go badly. It just depends on the timing. So what have I been able to do recently? Now, these are some stamps that I made with the new gel. At least some of these are. And take these out. I don't know if you can actually read that. It says, you're a timeless beauty. And if I can show you this side, you can see that it has a floor. And then when you touch the stamp, you can feel the raised bits of the stamp. And all the letters have got their little holes in. So, um, for example, the E has got the hole in the E and so on and so forth. And the L has got the little hole in the L. So that one has actually been produced quite well. Uh, when you finish developing your stamp, you can trim away any unwanted bits that you want. As that I store them on pieces, more pieces of acetate inside CD envelopes, because uh, that seems to suit my purpose quite well. Uh, what else can I tell you? I don't know. Um, 
you can do some pretty fine detail. I don't do photographic stamps. It's not my thing. I'm not interested. I'm more interested in things like doing flower stamps and designs and whatever. What have I got here? Um, helps if I look at it in the correct correct side. Oh, here we go. Uh, you've got mail. You're the sweetest. Ah, here's one where I was still experimenting with the timing. I got the word sweetest and I've got cake on here. I'll take it off of that. Now the sweetest has come out okay, but the cake has lost detail. And the reason the cake has lost detail isn't because I got too much back, it's because I put too much timing on the front. Why does extra timing on the front cause a problem? It's because my negative, if you like, isn't stopping all the light from going through. It stops a certain amount, but it's not stopping absolutely everything. And that's simply it. So the way that I'm doing it is probably a little more difficult than if I was able to use the proper um, overhead projector, true black printing stuff. But this is easily accessible for me it's cheap for me and I've now got the timing so that it works for me. <laughs> so I'm finding this successful and it's the way that I do it and that's that. If you want to go ahead and try and find the actual uh, proper film to, to make these negatives, feel free, that's fine uh, if you can get it. But I mean, I'm in Spain, trying to get it here would be impossible. If I imported it from the UK to here, even if I could find it, it would be horrendously expensive. And then I'd still have to pay out for printering. So, no, it's not going to happen. Um, I don't mind spending money on my gel, but <laughs> I want to keep the cost of the rest of it down to a bare minimum. Because then I can make more stamps, which is even better. Okay, that's it. hope you found it useful. And as I said, this is for enthusiasts only not for someone who's after an easy life. If you want an easy life, go buy your stamps. It's easier. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.